Hi, my name is Jeremy Horowitz. I'm a PhD student at James Cook University and the Center of Excellence for Coral Reef Studies, provided by Tom Bridge, who is the Senior Curator of Corals at the Queensland Museum. What I do is I study the taxonomy and evolutionary history of black corals. A lot of people confuse black corals with soft corals, but they're actually more related to hard corals or sclerotinia. They can be found in the shallows, as shallow as one meter down to over 8,000 meters deep. They're over 500 million years old, and an individual colony has been dated to over 2,000 years old. So they've been here a really long time, yet we still don't know much about their taxonomy and evolutionary history. So black corals are called black corals because their skeletons are jet black, um, which is why they're often used in the jewelry industry. But when they're alive, when they have tissue, the tissue could be many colors. It could be white, pink, yellow. So people are often confused when we call something a black coral that actually has color. But when the coral dies or you remove the tissue, uh, what you see is this black color. So this coral we collected from the Coral Sea at about uh, 60 meters deep, and it's very large and complexly branched. And the cool thing about black corals is that they could have many different branching patterns. So this one has no branches. So it's an unbranched species that's actually in the same family as the branched one. And then we have specimens that look like this that are very complexly branched. Um, so we're still now just starting to understand how the branching patterns relate to their evolutionary histories and the taxonomic boundaries between closely related species. So the Queensland Museum has the largest collection of black corals from the coral sea in the Great Barrier Reef. Together at the Queensland Museum and the Museum of Tropical Queensland, we have over 500 black coral samples. And what this essentially is, is a checklist of all the black coral species that live in these habitats. And they're important to catalog and understand because that's how we go about protecting overall biodiversity in Australia.